Hello and welcome to uh, Diana Introduction uh, Webinar. My name is uh, Jean-Claude Borel and during the next uh, 45 or 50 minutes, I will uh, try to give you a general overview on the analysis capabilities of uh, Diana Finite Element Program and its uh, application in uh, civil engineering uh, field. But first, uh, let's start with uh, our name, uh, Diana. Uh, Diana is a short form of uh, uh, displacement analyzer and is a general finite element program which is uh, dedicated to all types of uh, civil such as uh, including so including bridges and structures and infrastructures uh, geotechnical and uh, petroleum engineering uh, applications our aim is to uh, provide uh, a range of uh, efficient uh, engineering solutions to the daily or specific types of uh, engineering problems, but by increasing the accuracy of the final results, our clients could optimize uh, the cost of their project, which is uh, quite uh, quite something. Our core values uh, of our company are presented uh, on these slides. Uh, I would say based on the trusted relation uh, with our clients and partners, we try to mature uh, dynamic and innovative ideas to deliver uh, state-of-the-art solutions and uh, quality service in a world-class uh, project. This is basically our, our, daily, uh, our daily goal. On the next uh, slide, uh, we present a list of, um, of some of our valuable uh, clients. Uh, we have clients in different countries uh, all over the world from different organization types, from uh, governmental organization, uh, academic, university or research uh, organization, but also from the private, uh, private sectors like uh, consultancy companies or construction companies from uh, different sectors, uh, oil and gas, energy, underground structures. So uh, we, we really appreciate uh, their uh, effort uh, in uh, trusting and using Diana for their project. With respect to uh, Diana application, I quickly go through some of the main uh, key features and uh, activity. We start with uh, geotechnical and tunneling. We have uh, for that a very good integrated solutions for all types of geotechnical and tunneling applications. So you can use the uh, integrated environment of Diana for any type of uh, tunneling and underground structures. For ground freezing, also called uh, three-phase analysis, Diana is a very good uh, solution. For real uh, soil structure interaction, uh, so if you have some sort of interaction between the underground and, uh, and let's say the surrounding soil or rock, you can uh, model it with the concept of uh, nonlinear interface behavior. Uh, we have coupled groundwater flow stress analysis and uh, many more, uh, slope stability uh, and uh, embankment on soft salt and consolidation. So as you can see, we've, uh, we have many wizards uh, also, uh, like the one depicted here. Uh, for modeling uh, piles and sheet piles, including a uh, predefined library of parameters. So for instance, on this uh, screenshot here, you can see the, the library for the uh, sheet pile profile uh, for the U section and Z section that are available in, in, in Diana. Next to that, we have a very comprehensive solution associated to uh, reinforced concrete and the early age behavior of the concrete cracking. That's mainly when the model and the casted concrete go through the process of uh, hydration. For any types of concrete box uh, girders, composite structures, could be interaction of concrete with metal or combination of concrete with fibers. For dam structures, it's uh, if also very important uh, because of the process of uh, casting, curing, uh, hydration, and uh, impounding. We have also a good coverage for a design check, including the reinforcement base on the Euro code, mobile load and design load generator, and indeed the cross-section design check. 
You can use it in conjunction with your bridge applications or your general structural analysis applications. We have different solutions in order to give you a good uh, estimation about uh, nonlinear response of the model without entering into the elaborated uh, nonlinear detailed parameter input and setup iteration like uh, sequential analysis. Temperature and stress coupling uh, let you analyze uh, how the concrete goes through aging. Cooling pipes is also another powerful feature that we offer in uh, both uh, 2D and 3D in order to control the hydration process. Uh, crack initiation and propagation in concrete, uh, one of the powerful features in Diana. And also fire effect, uh, how the fire could uh, affect the durability of the structure. Among uh, other uh, applications, we can uh, refer to uh, masonry and uh, historical construction. In Diana, we offer a different uh, solution uh, at meso or macro levels. You can use Diana to uh, model the interaction between the individual bricks and the, and the mortar joints. Uh, for dams and dikes, uh, Diana offers uh, the solution, I would say. It covers all the aspects of constructions uh, for all types of dam structures. You can consider uh, the fluid structure interaction, dynamic effect, and uh, also induced uh, damage to the, to the structure. Fire analysis is another area that, uh, based on its uh, importance these days, has become one of the main topics for uh, structural checks. Uh, Diana, me, Diana can be considered as one of the most reliable solutions to that respect. For uh, earthquake analysis, you can use Diana for uh, general dynamics or uh, seismic. Uh, you can perform frequency response analysis, transient, uh, HFTD analysis. Uh, also take into account li liquefaction. Among the advanced type of application, Diana is uh, very well known in the field of uh, oil and gas and nuclear structures, based on uh, the types of uh, on the type of complexity. You can simulate uh, 3D geomechanical depletion, for instance, uh, for oil stability. For nuclear structure, you can uh, analyze uh, concrete containments or underground uh, waste storage. So Diana is uh, definitely a, a, a powerful tool when it comes to uh, the type of application that, uh, that, you can, uh, that you can do. Let's uh, now take a look at uh, the Diana environment. So for the, let's say, the, the environment of Diana, it's, uh, yeah, the look and feel is very natural. Huh? It's a Windows-oriented uh, program. So you have a different uh, dialog box with the main toolbar at the top, which basically uh, with different icons bring you to the main uh, application. On the left, you have the model window with uh, full access to uh, model components for both uh, geometry and the mesh. Uh, next to that, you have the property window that can uh, give you more uh, insight on, uh, and detailed information on a specific uh, component of your geometry. If I move to the main uh, window, which is basically the working window, that's where the, the magic happens, I would say. Uh, that's where you basically uh, build your model, uh, your mesh, and uh, look at the results. So uh, in this working uh, window, you can display the geometry uh, of your model with all the components as well as the mesh and also uh, the various uh, results uh, output that uh, Diana offer. If you look at the right, uh, you have the analysis window. That's uh, basically where you set up the analysis type and uh, the different options for this analysis. And below, you have the output window. So basically, once you have performed your analysis, automatically Diana loads the results database to the output window. And from there, you can access uh, the different uh, results component of your uh, analysis and just select the one you want to see uh, in the working window. At the bottom of the uh, Diana interactive environment, you can see two uh, dialog boxes. The first one, which is the message window, 
So I would say if uh, something wrong happened uh, or if you are doing something wrong, that's where the error message is raised. Or it can also just be a, a warning because uh, something uh, that you do is not compatible with uh, your input or uh, things like that. But you also get a, a, a logging uh, of your analysis. So for instance, if you perform a, a nonlinear analysis, you can uh, monitor the convergence of your analysis in this uh, message window. And finally, uh, we have the command console, which is basically the Python uh, console. Uh, Diana IE is uh, fully uh, coupled with Python, so every action that you do in your, uh, on this environment uh, result in a Python command. Uh, so you can uh, basically echo this command in the command console. Uh, you can replay Python, uh, or you can type your own uh, Python command in the command console uh, box. There are a few settings to activate uh, this uh, Python window, which by default might not be on, but uh, it's a quite a, a practical and powerful tool, especially if you are uh, repeating uh, the same type of analysis with just some variation of your model, material model or your geometry. Uh, using Python can be a very uh, powerful uh, tool. So with respect to this uh, environment, we deliver uh, the state-of-the-art solution in terms of graphic tools. Uh, we have intuitive graphical user interface with a lot of uh, display options and advanced selection methods. It's all uh, parasolid uh, based uh, in terms of modeling function. If you are dealing with a CAD uh, import file, uh, we have automated and robust uh, geometry checking and repairing tool. Regarding the mesh, uh, we have a powerful and automated uh, mesh engine, both for 2D and 3D. Uh, we have automatic uh, embedded reinforcement generation uh, and automatic uh, element type selection in Dyna. Of course, uh, Dyna offers full support of load and boundary condition. Uh, you can define a function uh, based on space or on time, and uh, it also offers full compatibility in terms of tables with uh, Microsoft Excel. For the post-processing, uh, we have a complete solution to result interpretation, so you can basically generate any kind of result in Diana. So from that perspective, it's a, it's a very nice uh, combination. In terms of uh, material model uh, classification, uh, we have a very comprehensive uh, dialog box with various input field uh, that uh, basically drive you through the material uh, setup process. We offer unique aspects to be activated in the material models. Uh, and again, interactive table for function and variable dependency can be, uh, can be added at any time. You can define your uh, load combination. Uh, this is a very practical uh, feature. As I already mentioned, you can generate uh, various functions, uh, special uh, and non-spatial function. Uh, property window offer you a, a full control on uh, parameterizing the selected operation, but also gives you some uh, more uh, useful and insight, uh, for instance, for your geometry shape or your material parameters. And we have uh, also the analysis window, which is a very intuitive environment to set up uh, your analysis uh, uh, setup. Uh, it also includes an interactive dialog box for uh, the face analysis. Like the one which is uh, which is there, so you can easily uh, check uh, which phase uh, are active or not, or which elements that are active or not in uh, in which phase. So it's a very uh, powerful tool, and of course there are many more uh, options. Uh, but uh, due to the shortage of time, I cannot go into much uh, detail. In terms of uh, workflow, uh, the workflow of uh, in Diana it's very straight. Uh, we start with the geometry definition. Uh, once you have defined your geometry, you assign your properties. So again, all the properties in terms of uh, boundary condition, loads, and materials are uh, assigned to your geometry. So everything is done at the geometry level. Once you are uh, done with this uh, definition of uh, geometry and the uh, assignment of properties, you move to the mesh. So basically, you assign your mesh uh, seedings. So you, you tell Diana how you want uh, your model to be meshed with uh, the number of divisions, for instance. You generate your mesh. And then you move to the analysis setup. So basically, you tell Diana what kind of analysis you want to perform, 
and uh, what are the different options and eventually what kind of output you want to generate. Then you run your analysis and automatically uh, the results of this analysis are loaded to the working environment under the output results. And from there, you can check your, your results and display uh, on your model some uh, contour plot or uh, diagrams. Uh, so uh, any, any type of output uh, that you can imagine is basically available uh, over there. So it means also that uh, if for any reason you need to change something uh, in your properties, for instance, so I don't know, you want to change the material model or you want to change the boundary condition or load on your model, since everything is done at the geometry level, it means that before uh, this change is taken into account, uh, you have to generate uh, the mesh again. So keep that in mind. Everything is defined at the geometry level, but until and unless you mesh or you remesh, if you change something, the things, uh, your uh, setup or settings are not uh, transferred to the mesh. So you, you need to mesh or remesh if you change uh, some aspect of your model. In terms of uh, geometry modeling, we have many options to uh, create the geometry of your model, uh, going from uh, import CAD files to uh, definition of uh, primit primitive uh, basic shapes. We have multiple operations uh, like the move, rotate, scale. Uh, you can perform Boolean operation. You have uh, advanced uh, selection filter, which allows you to select uh, points, line, face, bodies, depending on uh, your criteria. Uh, we have automatic clash detection, which is a very nice tool uh, that allows you to have a matching mesh. Uh, you can convert bodies uh, and sheet from a, from a, a body. Uh, we have imprint uh, point line on faces, which is a very nice tool when you want to define a load or a boundary condition on the face, for instance, on special location. Uh, again, you can uh, extrude uh, shapes, uh, extract subshapes. So there are many, uh, many options uh, available in terms of uh, geometry modeling. So let's let's take uh, a step back and take uh, a full, uh, talk a, a bit about the modeling primitive. Uh, so you can uh, either uh, import your geometry from third-party CAD program or uh, generate uh, your model from an uh, integrated environment. Uh, among the format that Dana can handle, we have the DWG, uh, the DXF, the STEP, and the uh, IGS. You can also import an uh, IFC file format if you are using Revit. Uh, furthermore, uh, if you are dealing with uh, terrain geometry, for instance, uh, you can import cloud of nodes and uh, generate uh, what we call the Bezier surface uh, from them. This is a very nice uh, tool, and it, al it allows you to uh, really rebuild uh, your uh, terrain geometry from this uh, cloud of nodes in, in, in Diana. After importing the geometry, there is a, a geometry check. Uh, as I uh, quickly mentioned earlier, uh, you can always check the tolerance and the quality of the imported shapes, you can fix it, improve it based on certain features that we have in Diana to enhance your uh, imported uh, geometry. So these are advanced features that uh, allows you to uh, take the most of your imported uh, geometry. Otherwise, uh, you can use the uh, basic tools uh, we offer in terms of uh, modeling primitive to create and generate your model. So for 3D, I mean, uh, we have, we can define a block, cylinder, cone, prism, torus, sphere. Uh, and as you can see uh, on the screenshot here, if you select one of these shape, you, in the property window, you can access more detailed information about uh, the geometry entity and the sub entity of this uh, geometry in terms of faces, uh, edges, and uh, vertices. Of course, we have also modeling primitive uh, for 2D such as a polygonal sheet, a cycle sheet, line, circle, and polyline, and basic curve. And of course, for 1D, uh, which is uh, the point, and again, same uh, applied to the 2D and 1D. Uh, from the property window, you can access more uh, information about this geometrical entity. You can perform uh, different modeling operations, uh, unite, uh, subtract, or intersect. Or uh, you can perform transformations such as a move, uh, scale, uh, rotate. So these are very uh, typical uh, and standard application. 
you can sweep your uh, geometry. This is a very nice uh, tool. And for instance, on this slide, you see the, the example of uh, a bridge state, basically, uh, where we sweep a reference shape, which is basically the, the box gather cross section, for instance. And uh, you sweep it along the uh, a grid uh, wire, grid curve, which can be uh, uh, curved. It doesn't need to be straight. So basically, you select the, the, the shape you want to sweep, huh, which is basically your reference shape. And then your tool, which is basically your, your wire, your uh, gridded uh, uh, curve or straight curve. And uh, basically, automatically, Diana will sweep it and build a, a 3D uh, model from uh, this uh, operation. So it can be a, a very powerful uh, tool when you are dealing with advanced uh, 3D uh, geometry. Another one is a lofting operation. Uh, you can generate complex geometry with uh, minimum information using uh, this uh, smart function. Uh, as you can see here from a, a, rect a, a square and a, a, a circular shape, you can generate such a shape. Uh, you have other examples here where from a couple of wires you can generate uh, such, a, such a shape as well. So this is uh, one of these uh, smart functions that can make your life much easier when it comes to uh, 3D uh, modeling. Uh, regarding the interactive selection filter, uh, it's object-oriented, so you can uh, basically uh, select the type of object that you want to uh, select, and automatically uh, it will limit uh, the selection. So it's very uh, useful when you are dealing with advanced geometry with uh, various type of component. And do, for instance, you just need to select a line. Basically, you, you put the filter to a, a line selection. And from that, you can only select lines. Uh, you can also make it vertices or face or, uh, or bodies. But at least with this uh, filter, you can uh, make the selection easily, uh, which is uh, very important when you are dealing with very elaborated model, which have uh, a lot of complexity. Sometimes the selection can be a, a problem. But thanks to this filter, uh, you uh, avoid all this uh, type of uh, headache. Uh, we are using uh, auto clash uh, detection. Uh, you don't have to worry basically about the nodal connectivity of the different components of your geometry interacting with each other. Diana automatically takes care of that for you, uh, ensuring perfect continuity uh, and connectivity between the, the two mesh as you can see on this uh, example of a block of soil with a tunnel. Uh, thanks to this uh, automatic clash detection, you ensure that you have a full mesh compatibility between basically the, the, the tunnel and, and the soil. And there's no loose connection, basically. Uh, there are other options in order to improve your geometry. So for instance, you can sew uh, sheets, uh, two or more. You can convert uh, bodies and sheets. So, for instance, from a, a set of sheets, you can make a body. And from a body, you can extract uh, sheets. So, it's working in, uh, in the two direction. For any operation in the model with uh, respect to uh, the loads and boundary condition, you can uh, use the input option to have the trace and track of the imposed loads or boundary condition acting on your reference geometry. So for instance, here we have uh, as an example of uh, a, a rectangular shape with a, a curve line and two vertex. And basically, we can imprint uh, these two vertex and this curve line into the, into the shape. Uh, so at the end, it results in one shape, which includes this uh, component. And when you uh, basically apply your load, you are able to select this uh, subcomponent of your shape to apply loads or eventually a boundary condition as well. Other molding operation uh, enables you to uh, rotate or uh, move a face of, of adjust your shape. So uh, it can be done via the action dialog box, but also uh, dynamically with the mouse, uh, just by uh, rotating around the one of this uh, uh, colored circle, which define a rotation around a certain axis, or just by pulling one of the arrows, uh, which basically represent uh, the x, y, and z direction. You can select and uh, extract then uh, extrude uh, selected face or edges uh, by combining these two operations. So for instance, you can extract uh, the face here, which is automatically recognized. And then from there, you can extrude and uh, basically uh, modify your geometry according to your needs. So this is also a very nice uh, feature. Uh, 
You can match a uh, different part of your uh, model with respect to each other using the align face function when you have different uh, objects in your working environment. So again, this can be a very convenient uh, option. With respect to the functions, uh, it can be assigned to the geometry to uh, simulate the geometry fitness, for instance. Here is uh, actually a good example of a, of a bridge that we model with uh, shell elements. And basically, we uh, use a special function to uh, describe the fitness and the eccentricity of the element. For the, for the shell element, so that yeah, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, application. But uh, you can also use it uh, to define a phreatic water level uh, in both 2D and 3D modeling environment. Uh, this is a, a powerful feature, uh, especially in the context of a geotechnical uh, application. Or you can, uh, another strong feature, sorry, uh, in, uh, in Diana is uh, the Python scripting, as I briefly mentioned uh, when I was showing the slide of the interactive environment. So uh, the Python scripting is a powerful uh, feature and the geometry optimization with respect to the effectiveness of the model when it's subjected to such a load and uh, how you can reinforce and retrofit the model because of the load distribution pattern in the model. There are many powerful features that you can use, induce and use in conjunction with other tools that we have in Diana based on the on the Python scripting. So uh, this is uh, definitely a, a must-have tool, uh, especially uh, when you are dealing with uh, optimization. Uh, you really uh, need to to dive into the Python capability to to take the most of it. For meshing, uh, we have different types of meshers. Uh, these are smart processes. Uh, and actually, I'm going to discuss that uh, a little bit in my live demo uh, afterwards. Uh, they recognize the uh, generation of your geometry. If your geometry is based on uh, extrusion, uh, extrusion measure comes into the picture and generate a, a nicely patterned structure mesh, which, as you can see on, uh, on my screen. So uh, by extruding the structure, I mean, you, you have a, a very regular uh, and structured pattern. We have uh, adaptive uh, element size that uh, enables you to uh, increase the density of nodes and elements at certain corners and age in order to have a, a smooth uh, transition mesh. Here, for instance, you have an, uh, an, an example of a kind of uh, yeah, mechanical piece. Uh, where we uh, uh, create a mesh without and uh, with this uh, adapt element size near curve. So you see that uh, we go from uh, something uh, relatively coarse to something very fine as a, a round corner. So uh, this is uh, the main difference uh, that you can observe with or without this option. Another case uh, of this effect is uh, if you have a terrain geometry, for instance, you can see the difference with or without the adaptive element size option. Uh, in one case, you get something which is uh, relatively uh, coarse. And with this option on, uh, you have a smooth mesh transition in some particular area of your, uh, of your surface. You can also use uh, grading to optimize your mesh. Uh, you have full control on the distribution of the node uh, and elements, so that can also be a, a very, very, very powerful tool when you want to density, have a density of elements uh, within uh, some uh, uh, part of your model. After meshing, you can uh, visualize the type of uh, section that you have assigned to the model based on the different profile that we have in our library. Uh, this is done using the real dimensions and it enables you to check the orientation and eccentricity. And uh, basically, it also gives you a kind of realistic uh, 3D view of your model, especially if you are dealing with uh, beam and shell uh, elements. Uh, so instead of line and the plate, basically you, you get something which uh, looks pretty much close to, uh, to reality with a real uh, cross section. At mesh level, uh, you have different uh, way of presenting uh, that enables you to inspect or present your model in, uh, in the most uh, suitable, suitable way. Sorry. Uh, it can be wireframe, it can be feature age, we have different uh, solid shading view. Uh, you can also have a shrinking, uh, shrinking view. So basically, you really see the, 
the, the size of the uh, element in your in your model, for instance. Also, there are different uh, mesh uh, engines which uh, enables to generate a structured or unstructured type of mesh set. Here you have some examples of uh, auto mesh or map mesh, uh, which are quite uh, elaborated. Another powerful feature is uh, incremental meshing. Uh, this is very interesting when you are dealing with complex models and you need to do some uh, modification at the geometry level for, for any reasons. Uh, so thanks to this uh, incremental meshing, you, you don't need to remesh the whole model. Uh, Diana automatically goes for the meshing of the geometry part of your model that have been subjected to modification. Uh, so this way you can save a lot of time in terms of meshing or remeshing of your model when subjected to change. So for instance, in this uh, example uh, that we use, uh, uh, it consists of uh, 3,460 shapes and 2,421 reinforcement. If we mesh it from scratch, it takes 623 seconds. But for instance, if we uh, decide to uh, modify uh, one of the reinforcement and we remesh it, thanks to the incremental measure, the mesh time is uh, only 111 seconds. So it's almost a factor six because as I just mentioned, you, uh, Diana is not going to remesh everything, but uh, only remesh the uh, affected area. So this can be a very powerful tool when you are dealing with uh, advanced uh, and complex uh, model. And uh, finally, we have a series of uh, online documentation, uh, including uh, some of our verification reports as well as our background theory and uh, good to add as well that uh, we have uh, a good number of uh, tutorials, more than 100 tutorials available on our website. Uh, and you can just consult them and basically they describe step-by-step -step, uh, procedure for different type of uh, model and uh, analysis in, uh, in various field of uh, application. So I've been talking a lot. Uh, now we are going to move to uh, Diana and uh, I'm going to uh, make a, a small live demo of uh, basically uh, a plate. Uh, this is based on uh, one of her tutorials, which is called the perforated plate that you can find, uh, of course, on our website. So it's a plate with a, a, a circular uh, hole, uh, as you can see, uh, and basically we, we we apply a, a prescribed displacement on top, so we try to pull this, uh, this plate. Uh, due to the symmetry, we can uh, take advantage of the symmetry and just model one quarter of the plate. Uh, and we are going to perform a, a nonlinear uh, analysis, uh, taking into account the following material property uh, and the following hardening diagram. So we assume that uh, we have a kind of aluminum uh, alloy material which is described uh, via standard hardening von Mises plasticity model. Uh, one of the key aspects uh, of uh, this uh, demo will be to show you how you go from a, a kind of uh, unstructured mesh to uh, a nice uh, map mesh. Uh, and you will see that it's uh, just uh, one click to uh, move from, uh, from one uh, irregular mesh to, uh, to such a mesh. So, I'm going to uh, to highlight that uh, in the in the live, de uh, live demo. So let me move to Diana, but first I'm going to quickly check if there are any questions. There is a question about uh, load generator for wave motion or uh, ice impact or dynamic load modeling. Uh, in Diana, you can uh, definitely generate uh, wave uh, load or uh, dynamic load. Uh, we have uh, we have function for that, so uh, this is fully integrated in our graphical uh, user uh, interface. So let me go to my remote desktop where I have Diana. And we are going to start uh, the modeling operation. So some of you may be familiar with, uh, with that, some not, so I try to give you as much information as possible. So this is a working environment. And uh, as usual, you need to start with uh, a new project. So whether you go to File, New, or you can just click on the icon here. 
and uh, it brings you to this uh, new project window where you have to specify a name. So I'm going to put it demo today, for instance. You can uh, go to uh, your working uh, folder. I have one here, which is into FEA, which is fine for me. But if you are not happy, you can change and browse to your working directory. Then the next choice you have to make is basically the analysis type. So uh, it's already a very important choice because uh, based on this choice, Diana will uh, limit uh, the type of elements that you have or the types of options that you have based on this uh, choice. So for instance, if I go for structural, which is a default, I won't have access to ground flow, uh, ground water flow uh, options or heat flow options. So it's really to narrow down the choices and to limit the potential uh, source of uh, mistake. So we go for uh, structural, we go for 2D uh, model. Another parameter that you have to specify here is uh, a model size. Uh, so you have to imagine that uh, in the 2D, uh, it's basically uh, the size of the square where you try to uh, model your, uh, or, uh, or you try to fit your model. And in 3D, it's basically the, the size of uh, the diagonal of a cube. So you have to be careful with picking up this uh, model size. You have to make sure that it's big enough to accommodate your model. So our model is very small. So the default is one kilometer. I can keep it like that. It means that uh, in 2D, I will have a kind of square, which is centered in zero, zero, where the diagonal will be one kilometer. So it's definitely big enough to accommodate my model. The measure type, here you can uh, already tell Diana what kind of uh, measure type you want to use. Uh, do you want to use exact what dominant or uh, tetra uh, uh, pyramidal de uh, dominant? So here you make a first choice. So I said, yeah, I want to use uh, exact what. So in 2D, it will try to uh, mesh my model with quadrilateral element. Next, you can define the mesh order, whether you go for linear or quadratic. I can go for quadratic, which brings me to the next question which is basically the, the position of the mid-side node, uh, mid node location. So you have two options, linear interpolation and on shape. Uh, if your uh, geometry consists only on, on a straight edge, both lead to the same. Uh, basically, they are both going to position the uh, mid-side uh, node uh, halfway between your two corner edge on the, on the straight edge. If you have curved uh, edge, like in our case, uh, then you have to go for the on shape to get a better interpolation because the linear interpolation will basically draw a kind of straight line between two corners of uh, the element and put the mid side node halfway this, uh, on this uh, straight line. So it can be that you are far away from your curved edge, where with the on shape, this is exactly positioned on the curved uh, edge. So it's, this is the main difference. So it's, it only makes sense when you have curved edge in your, in your model. Then I click OK. And Diana is going to set up the, the environment for me. So I can check uh, the units, which are uh, over there. And uh, I'm going to use uh, millimeter, uh, tone, Newton, uh, second, Kelvin, and radian. So you can change your units uh, at any time. Huh? It's fully uh, interactive. Just be aware that you are uh, need to be consistent with the value that you specify because if later you change uh, your units, of course, automatically this value will be converted to this uh, unit system. So I'm going to uh, define my geometry and uh, basically I'm going to define uh, a rectangular uh, shape and a circular shape and I'm going to intersect uh, these two and subtract so that I get my uh, quarter of uh, plate with circular hole. So to do that, I start with uh, my plate. I'm going to use a coordinate system, uh, coordinate method for the definition. So it means that I'm just going to uh, give some uh, point coordinate. I'm going to give the first one, which is 0, 0. Then the second one, which is 10, 0. Then 10, 18. And finally, 0, 18. I miss one, 0, 18. And automatically, you see live uh, the geometry appearing in the working window. So just be uh, aware that until and unless you click on Create, uh, nothing is generated. As you can see on the left side, under the geometry tree, under Shapes, my uh, shape folder is still empty. 
So what you see is just a preview. So until and unless I click create, nothing was created. Now it's uh, created, turned to yellow, and you will see appearing uh, over there. So I continue and I go for the circular shape. And I'm going to position it in zero, zero. I call it circle. And my radius will be five millimeter. So if I adjust the side of the screen, you see it. And again, it's a preview. So I click create and now it appears under the, the shape folder. So next I'm going to uh, subtract this uh, shape. So uh, I click on the subtract operation. My target is uh, the plate. My tool is uh, the circle. I want it to be a subtract operation. Uh, the keep tool uh, option is off. So it means that uh, the tool shape will be deleted. If I leave it, I think I, if I say keep tool, basically it will keep the shape, but I don't need it. So, uh, and basically it will simplify. So in our case, I mean, there's no real simplification to have, but if you have a complex geometry, it can simplify the geometry. So I click apply and you see that now I have only the shape uh, plate, which uh, from which the quarter of uh, a circle has been uh, subtract. Then we can continue further and uh, basically move to the property assignment. So I click on the property assignment here. I select my shape. For the eleven class, I'm going to use a regular plan stress element. And there, I'm going to define uh, my material. So as I mentioned, we define a kind of aluminum uh, alloy. So for the class, I'm going to choose a steel category. And I'm going to the von Mises and Tresca plasticity. Here, you have some aspect that you may uh, add to it, but I don't include any of this aspect. And I define my uh, material property accordingly to the value that were specified in the table on my slide. So my Young's modulus is 70,000. My coincidence ratio is 0.2. And for the plasticity, I go for one Mises plasticity with a plasticity, plastic strain uh, yield stress. So with a strain hardening, and here I basically specify my uh, hardening diagram, which uh, basically is 0 to 43 and 0.1467. For so this is basically the diagram that I was showing on my uh, on my first uh, slide. Then I click OK. And basically, my uh, material uh, is complete. The last thing I need to do is to uh, to give a thickness uh, to, to my plate. I do it for, from the geometry. So I call it plate. And I give it a 1 millimeter thickness. And now my uh, property are complete. So again, nothing is assigned until I click Apply. And now if I move to the geometry uh, tree, under material, I see that I have this uh, material. One way to check that uh, the material is properly assigned is to pass the mouse on the on the geometry set, and you get some uh, information, and you see that there is a material aluminium uh, assigned to it. Another way could be to uh, display the geometry based on the material color. And for instance, you see that when I do that, it turned to kind of uh, gray blue, and this is actually the, the color of, uh, of the material. So the material is and the property assigned to uh, my shape are properly done. Next, we need to uh, define uh, some boundary condition because uh, we want to take advantage of that. So we go to the support and we define the first condition we call sim x, which is part of a set that I can call symmetry. So it will be on edge. And uh, basically, I select this face, and I say that the X translation is uh, constrained. I click Create. And I'm going to define the sim Y, also an edge, which is on this side, and for which the second translation, so the Y translation, is constrained. And I click Create. And you can check 
under your support that you have your two uh, symmetry condition in your uh, in your set. Next to that, I'm going to uh, uh, create uh, an extra uh, constraint because I want to uh, apply a prescribed displacement. In Diana, when you apply a prescribed displacement, you need first to constrain the direction where you are going to prescribe the displacement. So if I want to prescribe uh, the displacement on the top edge in the y direction, I need to constrain the, these degrees of freedom. So basically, I create a set that I call deform. Oops. Deform. It's an edge. I select this edge, and I, I uh, basically constrain the, the y direction. And now I can apply my uh, prescribed deformation. So I go to the loads. Pick, yeah. So I define a name. I call it deform as well. Same for the load set. It's an edge. It's a prescribed deformation. I select the edge where I want to apply my prescribed deformation. And here it's asking uh, for the associated uh, constraint, which is deformed. So I tell Diana that uh, I have constrained my degrees of uh, freedom. You can apply now the, the deformation in this direction. And my prescribed deformation will be 0.0625 uh, millimeter, and it's acting in the y direction upward. I click Create, and if I zoom out, you see the green arrows that are uh, depicting my prescribed uh, deformation. So the model in terms of uh, geometry and uh, property definition and load and model condition is ready. Let's now move to the mesh and uh, the mesh ceiling. So we are going to assign a different mesh ceiling. I'm going to specify 20 division for this curved edge. 10 for the vertical edge here on the left and the bottom edge. I'm going to put 40 division for the right one and 6 at top. So I go for edge division and I start with this one and I said it's 20. I click apply. Then for these two here, I'm going to give it a 10. I click apply. The top one. It will be six. Apply. Uh, I, did, I didn't select the edge, so and six and apply. And for this one, I'm going to uh, give it a 14. And now, if you click on, the, if I select all the edge and I click on preview, you can see the different. Uh, Radiation and I think the top one I didn't do it properly because I asked for six and there are much more. So I select uh, the mesh ceiling again, select the top one, and I say six. And now if I select it, preview, I have my six uh, division. Uh, good to mention that uh, when you are in the preview mode, uh, you see that there is a gray arrow. Uh, this gray arrow basically uh, gives you the direction of the line. So it means that for every line, there is a starting point and end point. And uh, the arrow point from the starting to the end point. This is pretty useful when you are using a grading in your mesh. Uh, so a, a non-linear uh, distribution of your division, for instance. And you want something uh, coarser on the starting point and uh, finer at the end point you need to know where is the start and the end of your uh, line. So that's why we have this uh, gray arrow, which gives you this information. So my mesh is uh, division is complete. So what happens if I mesh now? I get this mesh. So basically, I have my uh, 20 division here. And you see that my mesh get coarser. But let's be, let's be fair. Uh, it's the mesh is, is okay, but uh, it could be nicer. It's if we want something a little bit more structure, a bit map, let's say, we can uh, take advantage of uh, another option. Because by default, Diana tried to, to, to generate a structure mesh for faces, and to do that, 
uh, it looks it, it needs four uh, vertices, so four points uh, where the angle is close to 90 degrees. The official uh, value in Diana is that this angle should be uh, uh, inferior to uh, 135 degrees. And if it cannot, basically, it uh, it, do, it does its best. But uh, you have some control as end user to uh, overrule it and basically define your own uh, end vertices for the for the map mesh. So, for instance, if I uh, go back to the geometry. And you see here, I have uh, an option which is set corners for map meshing. So what happens if I select this uh, set corner for mapping? It's basically asking me what is my target face. I have only one. This is, uh, this is my target face. And here it asks you to choose for the corner uh, that will be uh, driving your map meshing. So in that case, I can say to Diana that I want to use this four point here as my uh, end vertices, which are basically the, the, the four vertices that uh, needs to be used for the map mesh. And you will see that by doing that, I, I have to select it. I'm not in the way. Yeah. Now I can select it. So I select this four corner here. I'm overruling uh, the default setting in Diana which basically was taking as a, as a four corner point, this one, this one, this one, and probably this one. So now I say that these are my four uh, vertices. And if I apply and then I mesh, you see that now I have uh, quite a, a regular and pattern mesh. So by default, uh, Diana always try to, to create a map mesh. Uh, but of course, it's not always working. Uh, due to these uh, vertices that may have uh, angles that are uh, larger than 135 degrees. So in that case, you can overrule the default settings and choose yourself uh, and force Diana actually to use uh, some corner nodes as end vertices, which by default are not uh, are not recognized as uh, end vertices. And by doing that, uh, you get more control and you can. Uh, Manage to get a map mesh, although by default Diana couldn't do it uh, with the uh, default settings. So this is one case where this option uh, can be very uh, interesting to use because then it results in a very nice uh, mesh where the shape of the element is much is much more regular than in uh, in the previous one. So that's one of the things I, I wanted to to highlight in uh, in this uh, demo because quite often we we we, we see this question coming. So uh, yeah. How can I uh, overrule uh, the map measure and get more control? So this is one one way to to do it. So now we have uh, our mesh. So the last thing we are going to do for today is basically to to set up a, a, an analysis, and uh, we could, for instance, uh, set up a nonlinear analysis. Huh? Let's uh, challenge uh, ourselves. So we go for analysis here. We add an analysis. We add command. I need to add the structural nonlinear, which is uh, why well, I don't see yeah over there. And here I'm going to tell uh, Diana basically how to apply uh, my uh, prescribed deformation. So I go to my uh, load steps here. I click edit. So automatically my uh, deformation is loaded. And basically, I'm going to tell Diana to apply my step in 10 steps of O size 1. So what does it mean? It means that uh, my prescribed displacement will be divided in 10 steps uh, of 10%. Uh, so at every step, I apply 10% of my prescribed displacement. But at the end, uh, if the analysis converges in the end, I will have applied 100%, so 10 times 10%. So that's how you should read it. So this is the percentage of your prescribed deformation of all your load. And here's the number of times you uh, you apply it. So my analysis setup is more or less ready. Uh, in terms of output, I can maybe uh, tune it a little bit and ask for uh, the displacement, for instance. Uh, we can look at some forces. The reaction forces. We can look at uh, the plastic strain. 
so strain plastic. And we are good with that. And basically, the analysis is uh, ready to run. So I can click on run. And in the message box here, you can basically follow the, the conversions. It went very fast, and the model is, is very fast to, to run. But if I expand it, you can see that the last step, which was a step 10, is converges in two iteration. But you can check that for also step 9, step 8. So you have the whole history of your analysis. And you can see that there is a warning message uh, during the first step, which says that the plastic strain that you ask uh, is not available because uh, at this stage, there's not yet any plasticity in the model. So don't be surprised when you get this orange message, this warning about output. It can happen for plastic, uh, plastic output or for crack output when you are dealing with crack model. If there's no plasticity or no crack in your model, you get the warning that this um, uh, output is not yet available, basically and it will become available from step four. As you can see here, it stopped complaining. So uh, yeah, uh, to end this live demo, let's uh, look at uh, one of the output, for instance, uh, which could be uh, the displacement. Uh, or no, let's look at the plastic uh, stress, uh, for instance. But then I have to go to step four when it appears. So you see that from step four, the element result is added. And I have my plastic uh, strain. So I can look at the plastic strain and how they develop uh, when I add more uh, displacement to my analysis until the last, uh, the last step. So this is it for uh, today's uh, demo and uh, introduction webinar. So what I want to insist is this uh, uh, options uh, that we have uh, to control uh, the map meshing and to overrule the default setting. So you, you, you saw that just by selecting the right corner, you can basically uh, overrule the, the default uh, options and uh, yeah, get more control uh, to your mesh. Uh, before we end this uh, webinar, I'd like to bring to your attention that we have a, a couple of events uh, in the pipeline. Uh, the next one is, uh, or the, the, the first upcoming event is our regular nonlinear analysis uh, of reinforced concrete structure courses, which uh, takes place from March 7 to 22nd. Uh, it's open to uh, everyone. Uh, it consists of uh, six uh, different modules that can be purchased separately. So uh, if you want to learn more uh, about Diana and especially uh, the capability of Diana when it turns to a nonlinear behavior of reinforced concrete, feel free to uh, register. Uh, we still have a few seats available, so uh, don't uh, miss uh, this opportunity. And also another event uh, that we will have end of uh, March, so on March 30, is uh, a new type of uh, online demo, I would say. So it will be one hour uh, online demo on a specific topic. Uh, so the first one will be about uh, the construction and the operation of an uh, arch dam. So during this one hour live demo, uh, we will really go through the different steps of the of the modeling of the meshing and the analysis setup so we go from a to z uh, in full detail uh, during this hour and it's a, a free event so uh, if you want to know more about uh, the diana capability when it comes to a uh, dam modeling uh, please do not hesitate to uh, to register for this uh, for this event so I'm going to have a quick look to uh, the questions. If there are some general questions, I'm going to reply it uh, live. Uh, if I are more specific, I will just get back to the person. Uh, but uh, I'd like to thank you all for attending this uh, webinar. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon in uh, one of our upcoming events. Thank you.